Tash Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week. This is Sakina Bhatt with another edition of Weekly News on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. His Holiness the Dalai Lama to meet Muslim leaders in Delhi, including Tibetan Muslims. President Dr. Lopsang Singhe testifies before Canadian State Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade on Tibet. President of CTA meets students of Gurukul program. Kasha invokes state oracle Nechung to offer obeisance. CTA shows solidarity at Tiananmen Square commemoration in Washington, D.C. DYSA Moon Goat claims the grand trophy of Gelium Chenmo Memorial Gold Cup 2019 for second successive year. His Holiness the Dalai Lama met with an Iranian group consisting of 80 members of the Iranian Impactors Club and CEOs of various enterprises at the former's residence in Dharamshala on Friday last week. Speaking to the Iranian group, His Holiness spoke about his moral responsibility to promote religious harmony and also mentioned about the report of links between Tibet and Persia during the time of King Sonsen Gampo during the 7th century. His Holiness further spoke fondly of the small Tibetan Muslim community who lived in Tibet during the time of the fifth Dalai Lama who gave them a land to build a mosque. His Holiness left Dharamshala to attend a meeting in Delhi to celebrate diversity among Indian Muslims. The meeting will also include participation of Tibetan Muslims. CTA President Dr. Lopsang Singhe testified at the Senate Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade on the topic of update on human rights situation in Tibet on Thursday last week. He was invited by Canada's State Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Trade to participate in the committee's hearing on Tibet. Dr. Singhe opened the session by recognizing this year as the 60th anniversary of Tibetan Uprising Day commemorating the Tibetan uprising against Chinese occupation of Tibet and the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. This is a formal resolution. Middle way approach is our policy, which is to say that uh, historically Tibet was an independent country. There is no dispute about it. Even Chinese historians acknowledge that, accept that. But uh, what we say is middle way is a viable option. So we are trying to find a middle ground where the Chinese government says sovereignty of China cannot be compromised, territorial integrity cannot be compromised, one China policy cannot be compromised. To that, His Holiness Dalai responded by saying, okay, we could accept all this, provided repression of Tibetans in Tibet end and genuine autonomy is granted to Tibetans in Tibet. Mr. Sean Steele, Executive Director of Greater China Policy and Coordination, Global Affairs Canada, described Canada's concern about the human rights situation Canada in China. deeply concerned about the human rights situation affecting Tibetans, which include the protection of linguistics, linguistic and cultural rights. The detention and sentencing of Mr. Tasha Wongchuk, an ethnic Tibetan businessman from Tsinghai province, to five years in prison in May 2018, for his simple advocacy of Tibetan linguistic and cultural rights as permitted under Chinese law is but one example of the recent troubling developments concerning the human rights situation in China. In this particular case, we have not only appealed to the government of China for Mr. Wang Chuk's unconditional release, but have also endorsed a public statement by United Nations experts calling for charges against Mr. Wang Chuk to be dropped. President Dr. Lopsang Singhe met with a group of 28 students from different educational institutes in India at Dharamshala on Wednesday this week. The students are on their month-long visit to Dharamshala as part of the annual Gurukul program, which is organized by the Foundation for Universal Responsibility of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to promote inter-community exchange. During the interactive session, the students asked a series of questions regarding Sikyong's journey to becoming the political leader of Tibet on CTA and how it is keeping the freedom struggle of Tibet alive and the evolution of Tibetan democracy in exile. The Gurukul program is held annually for a month in Dharamshala. The program aims to enrich the participants by providing an extended introduction to Tibetan culture and religion by actively engaging the participants in daily activities of Tibetan life in the monasteries and nunneries and with communities in exile. The Kasha of Central Tibetan Administration invoked Nechung, the official state oracle of the CTA, at a brief ceremony held at Nechung Monastery in Dharamshala on Wednesday this week. 
The ceremony was attended by CTA President Dr. Lufsang Singhe, Speaker of Tibetan Parliament in Exile Pema Jhungne, Chief Justice Commissioner Mr. Kurgyu Dundup, Justice Commissioners, members of the Kasha, members of the Standing Committee of the Tibetan Parliament, and secretaries, senior officials, and staffs of various departments of CTA. The Central Tibetan Administration observes this annual ceremony to pay respect and gratitude to Nechung, a key state oracle of the Central Tibetan Administration. Tenzing Dende, head of the China desk of Central Tibetan Administration, spoke at the commemoration for the 30th anniversary of Tiananmen Square massacre earlier this month. A candlelight vigil and a ceremony of remembrance were held in front of Liberty Statue near Capitol Hill. There were leaders of the Democratic Movement for China and many Chinese and other supporters joined the event. Tenzing Dende remarked that Tibetan freedom struggle and Chinese democracy movement bear the same suffering and same destiny. Therefore, he said the realization of China's democratization and the resolution of Tibet issue is a shared and common responsibility. Everyone in the world who respects life, upholds justice and cherishes freedom will never forget this day. As a Tibetan who has been in exile for a long time, I am touched and deeply aware of the June 4th, 1989. I believe that the spirit of June 4th will last forever. Tiananmen Square Massacre was the most painful bloody event in contemporary Chinese history that killed innocent students. The Chinese authorities used tanks, machine guns for a peaceful call where students and citizens demanded freedom and democracy in China. Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation hosted a public rally on the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre and to highlight the continued oppression of the Chinese people by the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, DYSA Moon Goat claims the grand trophy of Gelyum Chenmo Memorial Gold Cup 2019 for the second successive year in its final match with Dundubling Football Club on Monday this week. As the chief guest of the event, President Dr. Lopsang Singhe reiterated that GCMGC is a prestigious tournament because of the effort and input that went into organizing the tournament ever since its foundation in 1981. DYSA Mungot claimed the trophy by scoring a total of five goals against three goals by Dundubling Football Club in the penalty shootout following the draw in the regular time. The Silver Jubilee of GCMGC was hosted by the Upper TCV School Dharamshala and organized by TNSA. Convened in 1981, the tournament is held every year to honor the memory of the late mother of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Gelyum Chenbo Dikitsring. That's all for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. See you next time and have a great weekend.